tomorrow we start our new powerlifting program and we're gonna call it the Renegade program. This one has three different paths, the powerlifting, the strongman, and the weightlifting. This one, we're gonna talk about the weightlifting, kinda of go, go over the stuff you might need to know for the weightlifting path. Uh, just remember, weightlifting is snatch, clean and jerk. That's what they typically call it, it's Olympic weightlifting. So that when you hear me say weightlifting, yes, I know that's lifting weights, but it actually is geared towards the snatch and the clean and jerk. So that's why this is the weightlifting path. Um, your goal is to get better at the snatch and clean and jerk. We are still gonna have strength work, obviously, because that's what's gonna make those two movements stronger, but a majority of your work is gonna be a lot of technique work on those two movements. So that way when we test at the very end, you'll be stronger in your main lifts, but with those two movements, your technique will be better and it'll be way easier to PR and you should get a pretty good PR. So for our weightlifting uh, path, you're gonna have six days programmed. Five of those days are actual workouts with lifting that you would need to do if you wanna do the full program. You don't have to do all five days. You don't have to do all six days. The sixth day is just a rest day anyway. I just show you where to put it. If you wanna do a Monday through Saturday and you're capable of doing a Monday through Saturday because your schedule works that way, I would follow it the exact order I put it in, okay? But if you can only do five days at the gym and you need to put your rest day at different areas, move it however you want. Try to keep those five days in order though. If you need to do four or three or two or one days of lifting, that's fine. Pick the most important day that you want to do and do that day every single week. Don't try to do smash a bunch together. Don't try to do whatever it is you think you should do. Just pick the most important day. If you can only do one day, if you can only do two days, pick the two most important days. If you can only do three, pick the three most important, four, four most important, you get what I'm saying. Pick the most important days if you cannot do the full program and do those every single week. That way you can progress on those days that you picked and at the end of the 11 weeks, you will have progression. If you're doing a bunch of random stuff and you're not getting the days in that you need to be getting in, you're not gonna have as much progression by the end. But if you can do exactly how it's shown on the website, the six days or the five days, follow it in the order that it is, try to follow it exactly like it is. It's set up to give you the best recovery possible so you can do uh, the lifting every single day. When you go to the website, it's gonna pull up our power lifting one. That's just our regular program that we done last cycle it's our typical bench press, back squat, and deadlift, and shoulder press. You will need to click on menu and find the weightlifting tab. Once you click on the weightlifting tab, you will see your six days. Every single week, you'll have your six days underneath the weightlifting tab, and that's where you need to go to see what you gotta do. All right, we're gonna have to talk about some terminology for this, because there is a lot of terminology that confuses people when I, we've done Olympic lifting in the classes. So we've got our main focus, for the weightlifting cycle are the Olympic lifting movements, snatch and clean and jerk. So you're gonna probably see snatch, clean, or clean and jerk a lot. Now, when you see the word snatch, it is the full movement. When you see the word clean, it is the full movement. When you see the word clean and jerk, it's the full movement with a jerk at the top of the catch when you stand up. What I mean by full movement means it should be coming off the floor and you should be catching it in the squat. One. You guys need to be practicing laying in the squat because it's gonna allow you to get more weight by the end. Reasoning B, the heavier the weight gets, the less you're gonna be able to pull that weight high enough to catch it high. So if you can only pull it to your belly button, you're gonna to have to drop way down in your squat to catch that bar on your shoulders or above your head if it's a snatch. So you need to be practicing the full movement. So if you see snatch, you're laying in the squat and it's pulled off the floor. If you see clean, it's pulled off the floor, you should be laying in the squat. If you see clean and jerk, Pull off the floor, you should be laying in the squat. When you stand up, you're gonna be doing a split jerk. Okay, practice that split jerk. Again, it's the same as landing in the squat for the clean and the snatch. Landing in the split, going above your head, will allow you to catch the most weight the easiest once you get the technique down. So it's important to always practice the ones that are gonna allow you to get the most weight, especially if you're here to get those better. So when you see snatch, clean, and clean and jerk, those are the full, regular old base movements off the floor, catch it in the squat, off the floor, catch it in the squat, off the floor, catch it in the squat, and then stand up, put it over your head doing a split jerk, okay? The regular old movements. Now, some variations you're gonna see. This is where people can start to get confused. You should not have to ask me, is this squat or this power, okay? These are squats, obviously, because there's nothing telling you it's a power. But if you see this, 
power snatch, power clean, or power clean and jerk, you're obviously doing a power. Now remember, power just means you're not landing in the squat. It still comes from the floor because it's still the full movement. I'm just telling you I want you to catch it in the power position, meaning high. Don't land in that squat. I want you to use the jump real hard and have to pull harder to catch it high. You should still be dropping and meeting the bar, but it should be not as low as your squat. Even if you land above, right above parallel, that's still a power. So whenever you're doing power cleans, practice dropping under the bar, just stop before you land in that squat. That'll help out when you're pulling heavier weight to get used to where to land and where to meet the bar. So when you do powers, don't land in the squat, but meet the bar low. Don't just try to pick it up and stand up tall. It's not right. Your technique is way off if you're doing that. So power snatch comes from the floor, catch it above the squat. Power clean comes from the floor, catch it above the squat. Power clean and jerk comes from the floor, catch it above the squat, stand up, do a split jerk again. Again, work in the split jerk. That one will work a lot. All right? So power still comes from the floor, you're just not squatting. Next terminology you might see, hang snatch, hang clean, hang clean and jerk. So if you see the word hang in front of snatch clean or clean and jerk, obviously that means you're doing it from the hang. It's either gonna be position one or position two right around your knees. I might say mid thigh, I might say mid shin, but the weight should not be touching the floor. So anytime you see the word hang, it is not touching the floor. You're gonna pick it all the way up and then get set in whatever position I told you to set up in. And you'll do your snatch, your clean, or your clean and jerk from that position. So if we have a hang snatch, you should land in the squat. Why? Because there's no power saying to not. So since it says hang snatch, coming from whatever position in the hang I tell you to, land in the squat. Since it says hang clean, going from whatever position I tell you to, land in the squat. Hang clean and jerk, whatever position I tell you to, land in the squat, stand up, do your split jerk. Okay? So hang's gonna indicate whether it comes off the floor or not. Power indicates whether it's caught in the squat or not. So we have our hang snatch, hang clean, hang clean and jerk. The next variation you might see, hang power snatch, hang power clean, hang power clean and jerk. Obviously this has both indicators in front of it, so we know that the snatch is gonna be somewhere in position one, two, or somewhere where I tell you, but not touching the floor, and you're gonna catch it in a power position, meaning you're not gonna land in the squat. The hang power clean, same thing. Whatever hang I tell you from, it's not touch the floor because it's a hang. And also, since it says power, we're not landing in the squat. We're landing in a power position, getting meeting the bar wherever we want, practicing landing low, but not low in the squat. Hang power clean and jerk, same thing. The hang indicates that it's position one or two or mid shin or mid thigh or wherever I tell you. And then the power indicates that you're not landing in the squat. Those are probably all of the things you're gonna need to know all to make it simple, know what hang means, know what power means, and if you don't see either one of those on there, I should not get the question, is this power, or is this a hang, or is this a squat, or is this this, or this that? Because it doesn't say hang or power, you know you're doing the full movement from the floor, landing in the squat. If you see the word hang, it's from the hang. If you see the word power, you don't land in the squat. If you see hang and power, it's from the hang, you don't land in the squat. Those two words describe the movement. They're not there, the movement's the real full thing. Okay, the next part I wanna talk about for the weightlifting is the strength portion. After your weightlifting part, you'll have a strength portion, which will be your deadlift, your back squat, and your push press. You won't really have bench press because it doesn't really benefit weightlifting very much. Bench press is gonna be more of a secondary movement or accessory movement that you'll see on there. But those three movements you'll be using for your strength work. The push press is gonna be the strength work for your jerk. The back squat is obviously your strength work for your legs to help you stand up the snatch and the clean. The deadlift is obviously your strength work for pulling the clean and the snatch off the floor. During that time, you're gonna have a 20 minute strict clock. You're gonna either be looking for a five rep max, three rep max, or a one rep max, depending on the day, the movement, and what part of the cycle we're on. Um, the max is for the day, doesn't have to be a PR. Your guys' folders will have your old five rep max, three rep max, one rep max in there. You're gonna use that as a guideline to take your percents off of to work up and try to see if you can have a PR for the day if you, if you feel good. But if you don't feel good, you need to be looking to hit the highest, the heaviest five rep or three rep or one rep, whatever it might be calling for. Um, 
which remember a lot of times I talk about it, somewhere above 90% would be the goal. If that is easy, then you go for the PR. If it's not easy and you don't feel like you got it in you, stay somewhere between 90% and that 102% and you've hit a very heavy rep max for the day. Okay, as long as you're going as heavy as you can for that day, you will get stronger in the long run. So remember, strict 20 minutes, we're looking for a rep max. If it calls for a five rep max deadlift, you're going for a five rep max in that 20 minute time frame, trying to get the heaviest five reps you can. If you got it that day, go for the PR on that five rep max. Okay, the percents for our strength part. So we're gonna have a strict 20 minute clock. These are the percents I'd like you to use to work up. They will give you the best opportunity to PR at the end without either running out of time or going too fast and not getting enough rest. Um, the first thing I wanna say though is these percents will be pulled off of whatever rep max you are doing for the day. So if it's a five rep max deadlift, which we have Monday, tomorrow, you will use your five rep max to pull these percents off of. Not your one rep or not your three rep. So make sure whatever rep max we might be doing for the day on whatever movement you're on, that is the rep max you are using to use these percents. The first thing you'll see though, we have red, green, and purple colors. So starting out, our red is gonna be our lightweight, kind of warm up, working speed and technique. We're gonna be following the warm up of probably some barbell work. So we're gonna jump right to 30% on our very first minute. The red is gonna be done on the minute. So you can see we start at zero, and at the minute mark, we will go to set two. Okay, so you have one minute to do the first set, which is five reps at 30%. Then at the minute mark, we'll go right to our next set at 50%, and we're gonna do three reps. We're only doing two sets in that red where it's kind of light and kind of uh, working the speed and the technique of the movement. Now continuing into the green, so at the two minute mark, we work, go to set three. Set three, we have two minutes, so from two minutes to four minute mark, to do either five, three, or one rep at 60%. Now this is where you're gonna need to know what rep max you're doing for the day, obviously. So if you're doing a five rep max, you'll do five reps at 60%. If you're doing a three rep max, three reps at 60%. If you're doing a one rep max, one rep at 60%. So this set will be whatever reps you are doing for the rep max of the day. When that four minute mark hits, you'll have till the six minute mark to do a set at 70%. Same thing, five, three, or one reps, depending on what your rep max is for the day. At the six minute mark, we will have till the eight minute mark to do two reps at 80%. This is the last of our medium type of weight, kind of getting used to some load, still working speed and technique, but it'll be the last one and we're only doing two reps there. Then we move into the purple, the heavy zone. The purple is always gonna be one reps, because I want you to kind of fill the weight out. That way you know if it's heavy and you're not feeling it very good today, you can take a break and then go for whatever rep max it is you're doing. If that one rep feels super fast and super easy, you know to move on to the next part and then try one rep there. So at the eight minute mark, we'll have three minutes to do one rep and 90%. If 90% feels very hard, you're gonna rest until the 11 minute mark and then you're gonna go for your rep max on that next uh, set instead of doing 95%. Because if 90% felt kind of hard and you don't think you can pull off five reps at it, but it, or if you do, it's gonna be very hard to get the five reps, you need to do that at 90%. Because it is a rep max for the day, you don't have to PR. So at the 11 minute mark to the 14 minute mark, you will do the 90% again, and if it's a five rep max, you're going for your five rep max. If it's a three rep max, you're going for your three. If it's a one rep max, you're going for your one rep max there. But again, anything above 90% is good. But let's say that one rep at 90% felt real easy. Then at the 11 minute mark, you move up to 90% and you're doing one rep there. You test it out. If it feels kind of difficult and you don't think you can go up any heavier or get any heavier for that weight, for whatever rep max you're doing, you'll go rest until the 14 minute mark. At the 14 minute mark, you will be going for whatever your rep max is off of that 90%. But let's say 95% feels easy. Then you'll rest until the 14 minute mark and you'll move up to 98%. 98% will tell you if you should go for a PR or not for sure. So you do that one rep at 98%, it feels super easy, then you're gonna go for your PR in the next set at the 17 minute mark. If uh, that 98% feels super hard, then same thing, at that 17 minute mark, repeat the 98% and do however many reps it is you need to do for your rep max. But let's say it felt easy, at the 17 minute mark, you have till the 20 minute mark 
to hit 102%, which will give you a PR. This is the only weight you're gonna hit for a PR. You're not going over 102%. No matter how easy that 102% feels, do not do any more. You've already got a PR. Again, because we're gonna be touching these numbers and these rep maxes multiple times throughout these 11 weeks. There's no need to push your PR so high that you cannot keep PRing throughout these 11 weeks. If you can keep squeaking out five pound maxes every uh, time you touch it, that's gonna give you a bigger gain at the very end. Teach your body how to keep gradually getting stronger, not just real big burst of a PR and then be stuck real underneath that PR and can't PR again. Because we're not testing, we're just going for a max for the day. We will test at the end of the 11 weeks. So just remember, if, if you get to the 102% and that's where you plan on going because you feel good and you're gonna go for a PR, just get that one PR, call it a day, We'll come back to it in a few weeks and you'll be able to try to beat that one. Our fourth part of the day will be the assistance conditioning. This is the part where you are gonna be breathing hard and working hard. Um, if you're looking to either have better conditioning, keep your conditioning, or even lean out or keep yourself lean, this is the part that's gonna do that. So this is the part you don't wanna skip. This is the part you wanna make sure you go hard on. If this was programmed for the class workout, that's the style of how you should go. If you're in a class and you're pushing yourself to the limit, that's what you should be doing here. It's the same type of thing. It's the same stuff, I, the way I program the classes, it's just gonna be geared towards the main lift of the day. So if it's squat, a lot of the stuff will be geared towards making the squat better and helping out those little muscles that move the squat. And same thing for the bench and the shoulder press and the deadlift. So typical uh, workouts you might see, they depend on the type of rep max we do. So whatever the rep max is, you will see a certain type of workout. Uh, one of them is a work rest. We've done this in the past in the class and in our past programs. That just means we're gonna have a round of three, four movements. You're gonna go through as hard as you possibly can and then you're gonna get a minute and a half to two minutes rest most likely. It's gonna be three or four rounds. Your goal is to hit those hard and fast to where that two minutes doesn't feel like enough rest, but you're getting enough rest that you can repeat that interval as hard as you possibly can. The next one you might see is an AMRAP, which you guys know that. Most likely it's gonna be an AMRAP between eight and 12 minutes. Typical movements, typical CrossFit movements, stuff you'd see in class. Again, you should be moving at a pace that is hard to maintain. You wanna be keeping that, that energy as fast as you can, keeping your intensity as high as you can, and pushing the limits there to make yourself have to adapt and burn more calories so you stay lean and you can maybe build that conditioning up a little bit. Another one you might see are our typical CrossFit style workouts, 21, 15, 9. You might see 9, 7, 5. You might see 15, 12, 9. You might see 20, 10, 15. Those type of pyramid things, that's where you'll see this kind of stuff. The three or four, three to five rounds for time type of workouts, which we do in the classes. Um, and then also the chippers, the for times, where you just work down the list and that's it. You're, you're going to see those type of workouts, those Metcons, every week depending on what day it lands on for the rep max is where it'll be. So same thing with those, those should be the highest intensity because those are the for time ones, those don't have a pace, they're normally gonna be eight minutes or less because they're gonna be full blown sprints. So make sure you put all of it in there. One of the last ones you'll see are EMOMs and, or interval work. Uh, this is just gonna be something that gives you a little rest throughout each movement. Uh, you get, you'll get some intensity out of it but it breaks it up a little bit differently way to allow you to sprint a certain amount of reps and get a little bit of rest. Sprint a certain amount of reps, get a little bit of rest. But again, these are all gonna be geared towards whatever the main lift was that day and geared towards helping you stay lean or get leaner during a strength cycle. So make sure you push the limit on these, push the intensity and move fast as you can. Our fifth part of the day will be an optional finisher. Now this fifth part, you don't have to do. It's just there if you have time to do it and you want to do it. Uh, it's usually only gonna be three rounds, possibly could be more sometimes, but for the most part, it's always gonna be three rounds and it's gonna be isolation movements. Um, what that means is, let's say it's a back squat day, we're gonna isolate the hamstrings and the butt muscles and we're gonna do movements that work just those areas. So it won't be a thruster. Yes, that works the legs, but the thruster also works everything else. So if, it was doing, if we were doing back squat day, an isolation might, movement might be the GHR, where we work the glute ham raise. So it works the glutes and the hamstring, mainly the hamstrings, okay? Um, if we were doing bench press day or shoulder press day, 
we're going to isolate the triceps, isolate the chest, and isolate the shoulders. So we're going to do movements, the typical bodybuilder style movements will be done here to isolate those muscles. That way we can build them up a little bit, keep them healthy. Um, you'll see bicep curls on deadlift day. Uh, you, don't, you do a lot of tight pulling with your deadlift on the biceps and we don't want to happen to get a tear or some kind of injury to the bicep tendon. So a lot of the times it's gonna be more geared towards bodybuilding stuff during this time so we can keep those joints and those ligaments healthy in that area while we lift heavy. But again, this is optional and done only if you have time for it. You don't have to do it. So don't feel like if you didn't do it, you're missing out on something. It's good to do it, but it's the last option that you need to put in there if you have a time crunch. All right, I forgot to talk about our uh, tracking for the weightlifting program. And it, it's not a whole lot of logging like there was in the past. Um, you're gonna find in your folders for the weightlifting, you're gonna have the strength portion that's gonna have your deadlift, push press, and back squat. It'll have your five rep, your three rep, and your one rep maxes. Uh, it'll have your best one rep max that you gave to me previously or that we have in the iPad. And then I figured out your three rep that you should be able to get off of that one rep and your five rep that you should be able to get off that one rep and put it on your paper. This will give you a, an idea of what to go for and something to use for percent work when going over that, going off of that 20 minute uh, progression. Now, logging your bench press, your clean, your front squat, shoulder press, and your snatch, because you'll see those movements, obviously, in all of your days. Um, I put your maxes for those movements down here. You won't be changing those much. Those will be pretty much staying the same. You're just gonna use, your, use them to look at them quickly so you can find them for whenever you're getting your percent work. Um, so if you see whatever percent for bench press, you'll be able to look on here to take that off there. You won't be changing those much because we won't be doing any kind of rep maxes for those movements until the very end when we test them. Now the upper ones, those up here will only change if you PR. So during that 20 minute rep max strength work, if you PR, that's when you'll change them. If you don't PR, keep it the same. That way the next time you do the rep max or whatever, you can take your percents off that best PR you have for the five rep, three rep, or one rep. If you happen to PR on one of those, then you need to erase and put your new PR in there. So that way, the next time we come around to a deadlift or back squat or bench press or push press, you'll have a new number to take your percents off of. Okay, so don't forget, the only thing you're really tracking are your PRs. The other stuff is there as a guideline, so when you do your percent work, you can look at it quicker. You don't have to search for it on your phone or anything. And if you wanna log any assistance work, you can. The assistance conditioning will have numbers for you and scaling options for you. So you won't really need to write them down um, unless you want to. If you kinda wanna write down what you scaled to, that way the next time we do that movement or that uh, style of workout, you can kinda look at what you did so you can go up from there. Uh, so just track what you want, but make sure you change your PRs when you do PR.